Welcome to another video. Please explore our channel for more useful videos. Before starting the topic, imagine you have a patient with bronchial asthma, who is on maximum inhaled bronchodilator and corticosteroid therapy, yet his symptoms are still uncontrolled. The patient complains of wheezing, shortness of breath, and cough with expectoration of tenacious strands of sputum. You consult the pulmonologist, and he suggests working him up for allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, which is quite a likely possibility in this case scenario. So let's discuss this topic. First, what is mycosis? Mycosis is the term applied to any disease that is caused by a fungal infection. The majority of fungi encountered by humans are harmless saprophytes. Still, Certain circumstances make humans prone to be infected by some fungal species, which cause disease by either promoting damaging allergic reactions or by producing toxins. Aspergillus is a fungus that can cause a variety of diseases, including asthma, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, aspergilloma also called mycetoma, hypersensitivity pneumonitis previously known as extrinsic allergic alveolitis, and lastly but certainly not the least, invasive aspergillosis. Among these enumerated diseases, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is relatively common, and it is the topic of our video. Allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, or simply ABPA, occurs as a result of a type 1 and type 3 hypersensitivity reaction to germinating fungal spores of Aspergillus fumigatus in the airway wall. This condition may complicate the course of asthma and cystic fibrosis, and it is also a recognized cause of pulmonary eosinophilia. Various human leukocyte antigens pose an increased and decreased risk of developing the condition, suggesting that genetic susceptibility is important. Coming to the clinical features of the disease. Clinical features depend on the disease stage. Common manifestations during early phases include fever, breathlessness, cough productive of bronchial casts, and worsening of asthmatic symptoms. Initially, there are signs of bronchoconstriction, but with time, permanent bronchiolar wall damage occurs, causing bronchiectasis. When bronchiectasis develops, the symptoms and complications of that disease often overshadow asthma symptoms. So, the symptoms of ABPA include wheezing, cough, sputum which are essentially plugs of mucus containing fungal hyphae, dyspnea, and recurrent pneumonia. Diagnostic features of ABPA include asthma, in the majority of cases, proximal bronchiectasis, Positive skin test for an extract of Aspergillus fumigatus. Elevated total serum IgE greater than 1,000 nanogram per milliliter. Elevated Aspergillus fumigatus specific IgE or IgG. Peripheral blood eosinophilia greater than 0.5. Presence or history of chest x ray abnormalities. And lastly, Fungal hyphae of Aspergillus fumigatus on microscopic examination of sputum. Coming to investigations which can be performed in patients suspected to have ABPA. Complete blood count with differential leukocyte will reveal eosinophilia. Sputum stain and microscopy will show Aspergillus in sputum. Skin tests for Aspergillus will be positive. Total and aspergillus specific IgE radioallergosorbent test is also done. Serum precipitants will be positive. On chest radiograph, transient segmental collapse or consolidation, or bronchiectasis may be noted. A chest x ray can also be normal. High resolution CT chest may reveal proximal bronchiectasis in the inner two thirds of the chest CT field. So, what differentials are to be considered for ABPA? Differential diagnosis include asthma, bronchiectasis due to another disease, invasive aspergillosis, churg strauss syndrome, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. 
coming to the complications of ABPA. These include hemoptysis, severe bronchiectasis, pulmonary fibrosis, and atelectasis due to bronchial obstruction caused by mucus plugs. What is the treatment of this condition? ABPA is generally considered an indication for regular therapy with low-dose oral glucocorticoids to suppress the immunopathological responses and prevent progressive tissue damage. Exacerbations, particularly when associated with new chest X-ray changes, should be treated promptly with prednisolone in a dose of 40 to 60 mg daily, and chest physiotherapy. In some patients, itraconazole in a dose of 400 mg per day facilitates a reduction in oral glucocorticoids. A four-month trial is usually recommended to assess its efficacy. Bronchodilators are also used, as for asthma. The use of specific anti-IG monoclonal antibodies is under consideration. Bronchoscopy should be performed in patients with persistent lobar collapse to remove impacted mucus and ensure prompt reinflation. And this is it for this video. Please like this video and share it with your friends. And if not already done, please also subscribe to this channel to help this channel grow more and bring you more informative videos. See you in the next video.